He's one of the founding fathers of Indira music with over 25 albums to his name, a revered war veteran, a trendsetter who flaunted off a cell phone, wait what, a cell phone in his music videos way ahead of his time. We're talking about none other than the legend, the maverick, a true son of the soil, Simon Chopa Chumbetu. But wait, there's the dark side. He was convicted of stealing a car between 1992 and 1994 where he served the prison sentence. He was also a well-known supporter of you know who and you know what, yeah, that party. And there was also a note, shit. Zimbabwe, it's your boy Miracle Love, and today I'll be coming with a social review of the impact of Simon Chopa Chimbetu's music. Not the man, the music. Now, out of his catalog of over 25 albums, I had to select just four songs that I deem to have a large impact on society. You know, I think I might do another part two to expand on more songs in the future, but for now, I'm going to be focusing on just four songs. So let's get straight into it. Song number one, newspaper. Now, when you go through the lyrics of this song, you know, there's some things that to us may seem not far-fetched, like uh, reading a newspaper or reading a thermometer, except for arithmetic because it's still fucking up learned niggas to this day. Okay, but back then in the 60s and the 70s, it was a big deal because the learned man was the role model. I like in this day and age, whereby the role model is the guy with the money. Yeah, your genome is in the likes because everyone got a degree like it's freaking blood pressure, okay? But back in the day when our grandfathers and grandmothers, especially our grandfathers when they migrated from the rural areas to the towns and the cities to look for work, they only go to manual labor. Now, there were a few black men who were working in the offices, you know, was drinking coffees, going through the papers and coming to check on them. But the idea got painful when they got home. The learned man would take his rocking chair, place it on the veranda, cross his legs, and start reading his newspaper straight into their illiterate faces as they pass by his house. Now that shit was painful, and it's what motivated them to put their kids through school so that they can get a better life. And this is where Robert Mugabe came in and capitalized on that and created one of the best educational systems in Africa. And speaking of Robert Mugabe, the guy was just a maverick who educated himself in prison. And talking about prison, the one and only recognized first lady of our beautiful nation, Salem Mugabe. Well, the rest of them first ladies are not the first ladies of the fucked up nation, but she was the first lady of our beautiful nation. He used to copy chapters of textbooks chapters of textbooks on pieces of paper and send them as letters to Robert Mugabe in prison so he could read. Mm. Talk about your woman having your back. When Robert Mugabe got out of prison, he went on to become prime minister and you know some of his learned comrades went on to become ministers, uh, senators, permanent secretaries, you name it. But what happened to those war veterans that were biting bullets like Hulk, heckling down helicopters with their bare hands and surviving genocides like in Chimoya? Well, they went back to the rural areas, became peasants farmers, and if they were lucky enough, some of them got some commercial farms after the land reform. But right now, all they could think of is, damn, that could have been me right now plotting a coup de top. But alas, henceforth, they didn't remember. Song number two, Nzimai Wango. Now, I picked this song because we're going through a voracious and unstoppable hyper machine of activism against gender-based violence and equal rights between men and women. And this song highlights the plights or the challenges that are faced by a married woman in Zimbabwe. So, on one of the lyrics, he says that, Ndiwe uh, watuwa amai vango. Now, in the unofficial court of society, a woman either raises a baby or a man. 
Now the baby is the one that baths three times a day, or smelling good of baby cologne, you know, the skin is always smooth, and everybody wanna kiss a baby. I mean, everyone wanna touch a baby, you know. But for Zimana, is the one that's always stinking of urine, Vaseline shining on the skin, and nobody wants to touch Zimana. You know, that's the same thing that happens to a married woman. You know, your hu the husband is a reflection of the wife. Now, when the husband is always scrawny and scruffy, you know, the society will always say, what kind of woman like this lets his husband walk out of the house looking like that? But when the husband is always looking fresh, super duper smart, on that chin, on the chicken, on the tip, you know, belly round, you know, they'll always say, I am Kaziyaru Chingatachi Murume. That's exactly what society does. And on another little way, he says, now, in the unofficial court of married woman, for you to be considered a success as a married woman, you must have built a house it, or a home. It doesn't matter you built it in the rural areas, in the town, you must just have built something. Okay? So, I know the Bible says that uh, the woman, the man, is the head of the house. But if you go through Proverbs 31, you realize that the woman is the brains of the house. She's the CEO. And unfortunately, the relatives are the board of directors. And you know, if you haven't built a home, like in 20 years of marriage, you're like, ever since the CEO came here, she hasn't done shit. You know, the pressure starts coming from the relatives to say, this woman hasn't done shit. Or worse enough, if you marry a rich man, and in those 20 years, you haven't done shit either of your own, man, that's even worse. Okay, so these are the challenges that are going through our women when they get married. And if you're married or you're planning on getting married, and if you haven't played this song to your woman, you're doing a disservice to your own marriage. Okay, song number three, Gomar Sinam Chero. Now, this song is all about peer pressure. And what I like about this song is that it's still relevant to this day because it's a song about a young man or a young woman trying to find out his way or his path in life, you know, when everyone around him is doing well but him, you know. So let me tell you a funny story that happened to me recently. So I was strolling in town and then um, I met one of my former high school mates. So in high school, I was always one of the top students, you know, I was in the top tens, yada, yada, yada. And then this guy was one of the guys who was at the bottom. So he was driving a Mac. <laughs> he stopped his car, rolled down his window. He was like, oh, schoolboy. <laughs> and you know, I felt that pain because I was like, here I am, a learned engineer with no job. And here he is, no five all levels, but he's driving a Mac. You know, I felt that pressure. I felt that pressure. You know what? I got to give myself a Mac. You know, this is just one of the things that are happening to young people of our generation because everyone is getting jobs like left, right, and center, and they're still stuck in your mama's house, you know. And for our women, did you see how women got married in the last week of December? That shit was crazy, you know. And that's the pressure that most women are feeling right now, and they're approaching 30. But, you know, on that, on that topic of the pressure that we put upon women to get married, I think we should just stop putting pressure on a woman to get married because, to be honest, marriage ain't for the faint-hearted and our generation is weak as fuck. Like, most of us don't even make the cut for marriage. We don't have the patience or the endurance to say, you got this weakness and I'm gonna live with that weakness for the rest of my life, or you fucked up here, but I'm gonna brush this aside and we're gonna move on with our lives like nothing happened. Like, no, we don't have that kind of patience, you know. Because especially with the women empowerment gig that is coming in as well. Women are now saying, I don't need a man. I don't need you. I can go away with my kids and start my own life. And men are like, I should be hoeing around right now, but I'm stuck with you. You see, and that's why people are divorcing, divorcing left, right, and center. Because we don't have the heart for marriage. It's just not for most of us, you know. So please, let's not put pressure upon a woman to get married because most of them are going to divorce anyway. Okay, so song number four, um, Samatenga. Now, I chose this song because of one of my nieces. Like, she lost her mom when she was like uh, in grade five and she was always posting lyrics of this song on her statuses and I had to ask her, you know why she was doing that and what this what this song made her feel and i realized that uh this song is about a dying mother and a child who has just lost a mother now i now understand why someone she made chose a mother specifically not a father because generally 
a child has a better chance of succeeding in life if they lose their mother at a young age, if they lose their father at a young age, than if they lose their mother at a young age. Now, I know there's some men out there who are killing it right now, you know, raising their kids, putting them to school and doing all those good things, but well, most of us are fucking up, you know, it's just reality. So, what this song implies is that you have a mother who is on a deathbed, or you have a mother who just died. And she's trying to communicate, she's worried about her kids, about the state of affairs, about everything else. And now she's like, I have to communicate with God to get me back there so that I can see my kids, so that I can see my last bonanza go to And you know, go to is always special, you know. And then here you have a, a, a child who was saying, how can we ask this question to God to say, how can we communicate? with our loved ones. And I think this is where uh, this concept that we have in our Shona culture of Masuikiro comes from because it's that urge or that yearning to communicate with our loved ones that have passed on that gave birth uh, to this form of communication. Okay. So in a nutshell, all I can say is Samo Chumba Chumbedi's music is all about pain. In the first song we were singing about the pain of an unlearned man or an unlearned war veteran. Second song about the pain of a, of a married woman. Third song about the pain of a young man, of a young woman trying to figure out his path in life. And the last song was about the pain of a dying mother or the pain of a child who has lost a mother. That's why Simon Chimbetu is still relevant to this day and is still popping. And young people like me are even playing it and even considering making a review about it because pain is universal and pain never changes. I'm still feeling the pain that my grand grandparents were feeling back in the day. And that's why this music is still relevant. That's it for today. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Peace.